My opinion on portable monitors has not exactly been positive. So why is this one any different? Satisfy your need for speed with the all-new Viper VP4300 NVMe Drive. Featuring blistering fast PCIe Gen 4x4 connectivity, you'll be burning rubber with speeds of up to 7400 megabytes per second. The VP4300 also includes both an aluminum and a graphene heat sink, so you can choose the one that's right for you. Or use one on each side to double up your cooling performance. Available in capacities of up to 2 terabytes, along with 2 petabytes of ride endurance, the Viper VP4300 is the ideal drive to help turbocharge your PC. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. On the table next to me is a very interesting portable monitor from a company I'd not heard of before. This is the Intihil... Hold on. Intihil YTH173PN-A7201D. It's a real attention-grabbing name. So what? You're probably thinking to yourself, these things are a dime a dozen on Amazon. They run about $150 to $200, and they're kinda meh. Well, you're completely wrong. Number one, this one is $379. But, whoa, 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 don't change the channel that quickly. Let me read you off the spec list first. This is a 17-inch, 1080p, 240Hz, FreeSync HDR IPS panel. Yeah, I just put all of those words together to describe a portable screen. Walking around the display, and I'm honestly really not sure what to call this thing because Intihil doesn't exactly roll off the tongue and neither does their model name. Anyway, walking around the display, we have a mini HDMI port, a USB-C Thunderbolt type connection, as well as a USB-C power input. And on the side closest to me, we have a power button, a menu jog dial, a USB-C on the go port, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit, as well as a headphone jack. The housing for the display is CNC'd aluminum and is incredibly sturdy. Also included in the box is a leather folio case very similar to the iPad display stands. It's not necessarily my favorite design, but I can't complain too much about it either, as it does hold the angle that you set on the display pretty well between about 100 and 150 degrees. There are speakers on this unit, but just for the sake of argument, let's pretend there's not. There's only two watts of power behind them, there's really no bass, there's really no treble, and the mids that are there are muddy across the entire volume range. So my recommendation is use an external pair of speakers or just plug in a set of headphones. The menu dial on the side here can be used to very quickly adjust the brightness or volume. Flick up to adjust the brightness and flick down to adjust the volume. And that's a feature I really like seeing in monitors like this, as those are the settings I'm going to most often be adjusting. So why have my opinions been mostly negative when it comes to portable screens like this? Well, outside of extra screen real estate, there's not really a value add for most laptops. Most of these screens have been 60 Hertz, 1080p, and of pretty low color quality. Most of the portable screens I've seen so far can display a spreadsheet or flip around so the person on the other side of the table can see what you're looking at, but that's about where the usefulness ends. Conversely, performance on the Intihil has been, for lack of better words, stunning in both gaming and content creation. It has features packed in that most laptop manufacturers don't even have available in their panels. Things like 240Hz refresh rate, HDR, FreeSync. In fact, it's been able to turn my MacBook M1 into a halfway decent gaming experience. Games like CSGO and Rocket League look amazing on this panel and are noticeably more responsive than the MacBook's built-in display. Combine this with a solid keyboard, mouse, and gamepad, and there's not much more that I would want to add to a mobile gaming experience. And speaking of the overall experience, having a USB on the go type C is a game changer. Simply adding something like a USB 3.0 hub with gigabit ethernet turns this monitor into a fully fledged docking station, meaning that one single USB cable can power your monitor, send data, as well as hook you up to ethernet and USB devices. And the on-the-go port brings up the perfect segue to circle back to value add proposition. Have you ever bought a second monitor for your desktop or laptop only to set it next to your previous monitor and bear witness to the stark color mismatch between the two that you now have to suffer through because, well, you're not gonna take that screen back. Yeah, me neither. 
Well, thankfully, your suffering may be over. The most impressive feature of the Intihil display, outside of its already very impressive gaming chops, has got to be the sRGB color accuracy. In my testing, the panel was able to display 99.7% of the sRGB spectrum with near 100% accuracy. But the cherry on top is probably the near-perfect match for the MacBook's built-in display. No more eye twitching as you're dragging windows from one screen to the other as you watch the white balance shift between the two. At $379, this is definitely a price tier above most entry-level portable screens. And not everyone needs a 240Hz 1080p FreeSync HDR IPS color accurate display to carry around with their laptops. That being said, if you are in the market for a portable monitor that can do gaming just as well as content creation, this might be the exact right screen for you. But what do you guys think? Is $379 a sweet spot for a 240Hz dual purpose screen? Or would you rather just have more real estate for $150? Let me know down in the comments below. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are also down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. for today is from Coldstream Brewery in Victoria, Australia. It is the Coldstream XPA, a 5% IPA that apparently deserves the X nomenclature. Extreme Pale Ale. When I bought this glass, I thought it was 13 ounce. It turns out it's 12 ounce, so it will fit a can as long as you don't have any head on it. Definitely not quite what I was expecting. That smells like sourdough. Totally does. Definitely not hops from uh, this side of the world. How do I explain this one? This is not like any pale I have ever tried before. Like I said, on the nose, this one is like sour bread and, and kind of muted. There's not, there's no citrus, there's no earthiness or herbalness to it. When you take a drink, it's kind of like lemon and dish soap. Not a terrible dish soap, mind you, but dish soap. Yeah, this is somewhere halfway between a, a Pilsner and a not so great IPA. Man, oh man, are there floaties galore. There's some hovering like right here. You can, I can kind of see them hanging around. And then there's a whole bunch of yeast just sitting on the bottom of the glass. For my first beer from Australia, not that impressed. Sorry. You know what this reminds me of? Budweiser Copper Reserve.